morning, or probably good afternoon by now, I'm not quite sure. Um, we were asked, uh, before I get on to my presentation, perhaps I should just mention a little bit about myself. Uh, I've been living and working here in India for the last 13 years, since 2000, and in the introduction I've been working for Euroschool for the last about seven, seven years. Um, I came here as a young man in 1979, so not only do I feel that I have significant experience in the education space in India as a foreigner, but actually I have a sense of perspective as well, because I worked here for three years from 79 to 82 as a teacher. I work as the head of the governing council of Euroschool now, which basically means I handle everything except the money. Um, I appoint the principals, I supervise the curriculum team, um, I open our schools and do all sorts of other associated things in, in that area. This uh, photograph here is uh, our architect's drawing of um, computer generation of the Euro School in Whitefield in Bangalore. I've spent the last two years working in Bangalore at the coalface opening three schools, one in Whitefield, one in Bangalore, and one in Hesalgata. Uh, they're all large-scale urban schools, which is what we're kind of working towards developing now. So as an educational entrepreneur, rather than a, a financial entrepreneur, this is what's driving my presentation this morning. So we were asked to talk about educating the next generation of educational entrepreneurs. Well, we have three kinds of capital, I believe, in setting up schools. We have the financial capital, which includes the infrastructure and so on. We have the intellectual capital, which is the curriculum, and I guess also would today include things like technology usage and so on. And we have the human capital. And actually this morning, what I want to talk about is the human capital, because I believe that that is the most important problem that we have in India today. But the rebel, the perceived lack of discipline, can sometimes be actually the sign of a genius. So against this background, why do we send our kids to school? Why do we send them to school? I mean, do we send them there to uh, turn them into idiots? It's a serious question. It's a very serious question, which Ritu came up against in her introduction. The World Bank, published a report last year, Employability and Skill Sets of Newly Graduated Engineers in India. And they came to the conclusion that only 25% of India's engineering graduates are employable in a multinational company. 25%, one in four. Three in four of our graduates, engineering graduates, are unemployable in a multinational company. And the reason for that was soft, the lack of soft and interpersonal skills, the lack of creativity and communication, the lack of cross-cultural skills, and also the little mantra that I always use in our schools, in Euroschool, learn, unlearn, relearn. These graduates, three out of every four, were unable to cope with this skill set. Their engineering skills were fine, but they were unable to work in a team. They were unable to work with colleagues from foreign, from other nations. Now, until we, until we address these issues in our schools, it's not going to get any better in our colleges. I actually sent an email to the two guys that wrote this report, one's Dutch and one's Japanese, and they wrote back to me. I, I said, you know, the problem here isn't just the engineering colleges, it begins in lower KG. And they said, yes, that's correct, we know it. But we were writing about engineering colleges. So this problem actually goes, it starts right at the bottom, in lower KG. Every educational conference I go to, I hear people talking about colleges and universities and blah, 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 blah. The educational problems of our population in India today begin in lower KG. That's where they all start. And at the moment, I see very little focus on this particular area of schooling and education generally. Indian graduates are fine with their technical skills, but they are way short on these holistic skills, if you like. When are we going to start doing this? 
And more importantly, for the children that we have in our schools today, these are the internet kids. Um, family growth patterns are changing. Uh, in our school in Whitefield on the first day, we had the most horrendous guerrilla warfare getting the kids onto the buses on day one. We had 200 and something children, and every single one of those children wanted to be first in the queue. And the reason is because I discovered in the whole school, there are barely a handful of children who have a brother or a sister. They're all single child families. Indian kids in the middle classes today are coming into school unsocialized. They haven't had arguments with their big brother or their smaller sister. The, the kind of child is changing, and the child's needs are changing. So this business of teaching soft skills is even more important for these kids. We are seeing huge numbers of children with special educational needs coming into our schools now. And this is a niche market which uh, somebody really needs to get to the bottom of. In our Whitefield school at the moment, we have 700 kids. 7.5% of them have assessed special educational needs. I would give you is to say these are the areas where, frankly, I slipped up. I could not find solutions to these areas. These are the problems of tomorrow. Not infrastructure, not finance, not technology. All of that's getting cracked. One way or another, it's happening. But this area is, is vital, and it's not happening. All truly great men are the product of two things. A tradition, I'm coming back to my starting point, a tradition and a rebellion against that tradition. India has a great tradition. What it needs now, I think, are rebels. And the best traditions make the best rebels. So for our entrepreneurs of tomorrow, yes, pay attention to the tradition, but please rebel. And particularly think in terms of the human resource area. And I'll leave you with one last bit of a message, which is this one. Learn, unlearn, relearn. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm.